Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the full moon in Sagittarius at 2 degrees 55 minutes on May 23rd, 2024. Welcome. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of fixed stars, celestial bodies, and galactic points to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And that is to help us start to expand our perspective of who we truly are, our multidimensional self beyond our own solar system. And so many of us are interested in our galactic alignments. And if you are interested in your galactic alignments, download my galactic alignments reference guide. There's a link in the description box below. What you'll see in this video are three energetic themes that I've pulled out from the full moon chart, but also three uh, questions. Should you want to integrate this full moon energy some more? This full moon is a fiery one, and we have the moon opposite the sun, of course, and the sun is surrounded by what I call the hot seat. And we'll talk more about the hot seat <laughs> in theme one coming up. To fire this moon up, we have the moon making important alignments to Pluto, but also to supergalactic center and two royal stars, Fomalhaut and Regulus. And we'll talk more about all of this in theme one coming up. The ruler of this full moon is Venus, and she is at 29 degrees of Taurus at the moment, conjunct Jupiter. And this is a very powerful expansion and highlight of divine feminine energy at this time. She is part of the hot seat. So we'll talk more about the hot seat that includes the sun, Sedna, and Jupiter and Venus, of course. And uh, this is <laughs> really exciting. It's a highlight in the cosmos at this full moon. And we'll talk much more about it in theme one. This full moon is speaking of that it's now time to expand into an even deeper connection with universal wisdom, universal consciousness, spirit consciousness. And the hot seat here is a archetypal um, highlight that is pointing us to uh, expanding also into what we don't know yet, because their questions that we are asking ourselves that we want to know is also where we need to go next in terms of our knowledge base, not only within ourselves, but as a collective. This is a full moon that is asking us to bring in the joy, the inner spark, the inner inspiration and creativity to enlighten and enliven that uh, creativity within ourselves and trust what we're feeling. Uh, many of us have soul memories from Atlantis that are now going to be highlighted. And we are getting a great opportunity with this full moon to start to let those soul memories come forward and see it from a different perspective, perhaps some in from a perspective you haven't really thought of before. The highlight on Venus expanded by Jupiter is a great signature for allowing that perspective, being that bridge between the cosmos and Earth to happen now. The expansion that we are all invited to be part of is one of unconditional love. The Jupiter-Venus conjunction here is inviting us to be open, to be curious, and discover our uniqueness about what our talents and gifts are, all in the spirit of using all of that to create a unique expression. We are invited to go within and rely on those answers that we resonate with, what really clicks within ourselves, and notice that because we are here to bring in a new consciousness that is flavored by unconditional love, with creativity, with joy, with love. And that is exactly what Jupiter and Venus combination, that conjunction is infusing us with, with that cheerful 
uh, adventurous side of us. And this full moon has association with uh, the archetypal mermaid energy, but also Atlantean age, uh, energy. And we are invited by Jupiter and Venus here to really expand in our expression around joy, in our inner spark and finding out what really is unique about ourselves in our expression, knowing that all our answers are within. And this is a beautiful combination with the sun and highlight here and Sedna in conjunction here, forming the hot seat that we're going to talk more about. But, but before we go into the full moon chart, I'd like to share what the three themes are. The first theme I've called Pleiades Wisdom Transmission. And here we're going to talk about the hot seat around the sun that includes Venus, Jupiter, Sedna, and Pleiades, uh, fixed star Electra. The second theme I've called Elevate Your Inner Passion. And here we have a bowl formation with a important message for us all. The third the theme is holding space for Atlantis healing. And here I'm going to show you a pattern that came through this chart so beautifully associated with the asteroid Atlantis, which is often is a marker for um, highlighting Atlantis healing. So here we have the full moon chart with the moon opposite the sun and a whole bunch of other alignments here uh, that I've called the hot seat that we're going to talk about in theme one. So let's first highlight some aspects to the moon here. We have a very supported moon here at two degrees of Sagittarius. And we can start with the two sextiles that are nicely supported between Pluto and the moon here at two degrees, and Pluto is conjunct Aquila Altair at two degrees of Aquarius. This is a very supportive message from Pluto that we're on the right track in terms of transformation. Um, the moon here is also making a sextile to the supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra. So this is the foundation of the support at this full moon. But we also have two squares, two, two royal stars, which is a square from the moon to the royal star Fomalhaut at four degrees of Pisces. Fomalhaut is associated with angelic energy, especially associated with Archangel Gabriel. And on the opposite side here, we have the royal star Regulus, which is uh, located at one degree of Virgo, also a royal star, very prominent in terms of uh, often shows up in alignments and aspects when there is important messages to be shared. The royal star Regulus is associated with Archangel Raphael. So we have a stable very supportive uh, foundation here for this full moon. And the two squares here to the royal stars, I interpret as invitations for us to grow more and more into our faith, our what we believe in, and supported by angelic uh, energy here. It's an invitation to move into a stronger faith, whatever we believe in, but it's a shift from um, being driven by the mind versus being driven by faith and belief. The long-standing conjunction between Pluto and Aquila Altair, and now the highlight here through a sextile at this full moon, is just reminding us of the importance to notice the dynamic within ourselves versus uh, relying on our ego versus what we believe in. And the supergalactic center is the multidimensional aspects of ourselves that are getting, we're getting reminded about at this time uh, as part of this full moon. This full moon is uniquely supported by two royal stars, one galactic point and Pluto, showing us all that what we can stand on, what we can rely on, 
because opposite the moon here and the sun shining a light on this hot seat that we're going to get into next is a significant event. So next, we're going to take a look at theme one that I've named Ladies Wisdom Transmission. So here we have the first theme that I've called Pleiades Wisdom Transmission. And we have the hot seat here. <laughs> you can see there's a certain area of this chart that is very, very highlighted. And that is the area from 28 degrees of Taurus to 2 degrees of Gemini. And I'll walk you through what I see here. So first, we have the asteroid Karma at 28 degrees of Taurus. And conjunct the asteroid Karma, we have Jupiter and Venus, both at 29 degrees of Taurus. And moving into Gemini here, we have Sedna at 0 degrees of Gemini, and then the Sun at 2 degrees of Gemini. Wow, this is a hot seat. And all of this is conjuncting uh, Pleiades, the star cluster Pleiades, and specifically the fixed star Electra. This is a significant highlight at this time. And I'm going to walk you through what I see here. And all of this in the hot seat is square the royal star Regulus. And subsequently squaring also uh, the royal star Fomalhaut. So we have... Um, important highlight of these royal stars uh, of this full moon. So the royal stars and the angelic support that is present at this full moon is significant, linking this grand cross together between the sun and the moon and the two royal stars here on opposite side. We also have the long-standing galactic trine highlighted here between Pluto, galactic center, and Sedna that has been in place for quite a while. But now at this full moon, it's highlighted by the Jupiter and Venus conjunction here and the sun being right around here. So this is a highlight uh, expansion of focus that we're invited to pay attention to. And speaking of long-term guidance, we still have Neptune at 29 degrees of Pisces conjunct Pegasus sheet in sextile now to this highlight of Jupiter and Venus coming together at 29 degrees of Taurus conjunct Pleiades. This is a um, very supportive guiding uh, direction. There's a highlight here around 29th degree. It's a culmination. It's a ending of a chapter and a new beginning at this full moon. So this hot seat is significant. We have a conjunction of significant feminine energy, Sedna, Venus, Electra, and together they are asking us to focus on how we can nurture abundance within ourselves? How can we allow this love and harmony to be in the forefront of our lives? Also, to use our unique talents and gifts and perhaps tap into unseen gifts, uncover new gifts and talents that we may not have been in contact with before. Electra, the Pleiades uh, star sister here, is a, a master in self-healing and in connection with nature. She can communicate with plants. She can um, tap into the healing powers of nature. And so there is a message here from Ele that combination of Electra, Sedna, and Venus together, expanded by Jupiter at this full moon. This hot seat combination is speaking of having a holistic view of um, spiritual consciousness, that it's not one-sided, that we are allowed and encouraged to tap into various things that resonate with us. So that could be very different from individual to individual. And through the support of the royal stars, we're also uh, 
invited to have the courage to embrace our uniqueness, to embrace and with the immense focus on the Pleiades star cluster here at this full moon, we are encouraged to have the courage to acknowledge what our soul needs, allowing us to receive that, <laughs> receive uh, a transmission from uh, a wise collective such as the Pleiades. And with the asteroid karma here, present at this hot seat, there is also a uh, opportunity to heal. And we'll talk more about the connection to uh, the asteroid Atlantis in theme three coming up. So here we have the Pleiades star cluster, and we talked a little bit about the Pleiades in that last video, but I wanted to pull in the seven sisters, an image of the seven sisters here, which is also what Pleiades uh, go by sometimes and uh, for you to tune into that image here Pleiades is located a little bit north of the constellation of Orion beyond Aldebaran there um, and you can see each of the fixed stars that are associated with the Pleiades star cluster now the Pleiades has a very uh, wise energy to it the Pleiades have played a significant role in guidance for many collectives here on Earth for a long, long time. The Pleiades star cluster is associated with integration uh, between realms and a holistic view of uh, experience, but also a guidance to us at this time is to trust in ourselves and believe what we, what is our experience. The Pleiades serves as a very significant symbol of strength, of unity, but also the integration between the cosmos and Earth, that bridge that we can be to integrate that wisdom. So I'm inviting everyone here around the full moon to connect with the Pleiades and allow that inner journey to guide you in terms of the answers that you may be receiving, uh, answers that are unique to you that may guide you on your way forward. So here we have Sedna, and I wanted to bring her in. We've talked about Sedna in the past, but as part of the hot seat here, she has an important message to honor our uniqueness and also to bring in that consciousness that often comes through the element of water and to nurture that abundance within ourselves of the flow. And she is ushering in new earth energy by that long standing. Uh, she has such a, a long orbit here, 11,000 years. And uh, that uniqueness that that comes with is worth and the stability is worth to mention here. But at this full moon, it is associated with that expansion, that abundance that Sedna wants us to focus on. So Sedna coupled up with Venus and Jupiter here, this is a moment of transcendence and expansion into universal consciousness. So this hot seat formation is going to be in focus for quite a while. And as we move into now the second theme that I have named, elevate your inner passion. We're going to talk about the hot seat and another formation that I've found in this chart. So let's take a look at that in the theme number two. So here we have the second theme that I've called Elevate Your Inner Passion. And if you recall, if you've been with me for that long, about eight to 10 months ago, we talked a lot about this guidance that this theme has brought up. Now it's coming back again. And let me walk you through what I see here. As part of this theme, there are two minor grand trines active, activated now by the full moon. So we start with the first minor grand trine here with focus on Neptune conjunct Pegasus sheet and the sextile between the hot seat and Neptune, of course, but also the sextile between Neptune and Pluto. 
and we have that trine between the hot seat and Pluto that forms a minor grand trine. We have a second minor grand trine involving the moon and the trine to Neptune and a sextile to Pluto. So that forms a bowl, <laughs> we call a bowl. Pluto is in conjunction with Aquila Altair at two degrees of Aquarius. Now, if we look at the center of that bowl, what is it pointing to? It's pointing to the fixed star Alphard in the Hydra constellation. And you can argue it's very close to that Regulus fixed star as well. That is a strong message from this bowl formation to uh, focus on Hydra Alphard at this time. Hydra Alphard is located at 27 degrees of Leo, and the Regulus star is located at one degree of Virgo. What is the message here? Why is this so important now? Well, largely it's because of the activation of this bowl uh, from the hot seat and the moon, because Neptune and Pluto have been in this long standing uh, sextile for quite a while. But now this bowl is coming into fruition again and highlighting Hydra Alphard. So Hydra Alphard is associated with uh, Kundalini energy, that life force that is part of our soul's essence that does not go away. It is also associated with being a gatekeeper. So there's some uh, guidance here with uh, guarding and putting boundaries around that life force so that we are not expending it uh, without having boundaries around that uh, life force. What you'll notice here too is the bowl and the degrees involved in this bowl. Uh, Pluto is at two degrees. The full moon is at two degrees. The sun is at two degrees, but Neptune is at 29 degrees. So this bowl will be in focus until uh, Neptune reaches two degrees of Aries, likely. So the window we have here between 29 degrees of Pisces and two degrees of Aries for Neptune to travel and, and hitting that two degree mark may be the window that we are guided to connect more back and elevate that sense of inner passion, inner life force, noticing what that is and, and really allowing ourselves to put boundaries around it so that we are not expending it, but actually uh, fulfill ourselves with that inner passion, that connection to Hydra, Alphard and Leo Regulus is uh, the peak of that guidance so that we can allow ourselves to be at the top of our own mountain, <laughs> uh, fueled by this inner passion that we all have access to if we choose to discover it. So here we have Hydra and the constellation of Hydra is actually the the longest constellation taking up most area in the sky. And I've highlighted the fixed star Alphard here. I also pulled in Hydra as an image for you to tune into. And uh, the guidance from Hydra here is to really connect with that inner passion, allowing it to be uh, in the forefront of your life. And so with this full moon activating this bowl formation and the guidance from Hydra Alphard and uh, Leo Regulus is putting a focus on us connecting with that immortal part of ourselves that consists of our life force. What really truly makes us feel alive. That is a strong message here uh, at this full moon. This life force may be the key also uh, as we move into theme three, holding space for Atlantis healing next. So here we have the third theme that I've called holding space for Atlantis healing. And this theme includes a very powerful formation that I discovered within this chart. And there's a lot going on between 17 and 18 degrees. And I'll walk you through what I see here. 
So if we start with Mars here, Mars is at 17 degrees of Aries, conjunct Tau Ceti, the fixed star in the Cetus constellation. Tau Ceti is associated with diligence, with diplomacy, and the this degree point, 17 degrees of Aries, we've talked about Tau Ceti in the past when the North Node was passing this point back in February of this year. So um, Tau Ceti is highlighted um, here by Mars. Uh, so there's something here that comes into action at this point. Mars is making a sextile to Cherry Clow, the asteroid Cherry Clow at 17 degrees of Aquarius. Cherry Clow is associated with holding space, also that mermaid energy, uh, water energy of healing. Cherry Clow is the divine counterpart to Chiron. So there is an element of healing here involved. Now, opposite Cherry Clow at 17 degrees of Leo sits the asteroid Atlantis. And um, Atlantis is making a trine to um, Mars here. So this formation at 17 degrees suggests that there's something that kicks in here with regards to healing, holding space for healing. And, and the opposition here between Cherry Clow and Atlantis uh, suggests that there is a um, need to hold space for uh, soul memories from Atlantis to surface, and that we are invited to use diplomacy, that we're invited to hold space for this healing at this time. So here we have another formation uh, connecting the 18 degree points with each other. And we start with Saturn here at 18 degrees, 18 minutes in Pisces, conjunct Eridanus Archanar at almost 16 degree of Pisces. Uh, Saturn is making a trine to Vesta at 18 degrees of Cancer. Vesta is that inner spark, that warmth that we uh, carry within and what makes us feel safe. We also have a opposition between Saturn and true Lilith at 18 degree of Virgo. So here we have that lesson. Saturn is bringing in the uh, suggestion here to really tap into that inner spark, allowing our inner spark not be suppressed because Lilith wants to bring that out. Lilith as an archetypal energy present here in its true form is allowing us to honor that uh, true inner spark within us. And Saturn is bringing in that lesson for us and tapping us on the shoulder to say, okay, how do you tap in? to your inner spark and now is the time <laughs> so when we bring this all together this is a formation that speaks of holding space for healing uh, allowing our integrated holistic view of our experience here on earth to expand using our feminine uh, powerhouses here sedna venus uh, and Pleiades, Electra, to guide us. This is a significant highlight that is kicking in now. Mars, Saturn, Cherry Clow, True Lilith, Atlantis, and Vesta involved with the sun and the moon here. And wow, this is just <laughs> a very significant time. Wow, this is a significant time. And we're here to listen. We're here to receive. We're here to um, traverse between realms and be comfortable with that and explore it. And we're here to allow room for expansion and uh, new experiences something that may be unusual for our own reference point. But this is the time where we are in an expansion phase and we are advised to go within to find that eternal, immortal energy that keeps us alive, that keeps us feeling connected to nature, to our environment, to our friends, family, and other souls here on earth. We are advised to use the element of water to feel the flow and to stay grounded at this time. We're invited to feel that we are one, that we are whole, and allowing those soul memories that 
some of us have from Atlantis to surface and be healed. Uh, we can hold space for those at this time, allowing that Pleiades wisdom to come through the heart and, and being a force for healing and expansion. Here are some powerful images from this theme for you to connect with. Atlantis in the middle, there's a lot of um, that has been written about Atlantis out in the public domain. If you're curious, go research for that. If you feel connected to this theme, Electra, Pleiades, Electra here, uh, a master in the uh, communication with the unseen, the connection with nature, telepathy, etc., and also Chericlo here being the water mermaid connection, holding space for a um, broader, more universal connection. Chericlo can hold space in any realm. And this influence from Chericlo opposite Atlantis here is to connect back with talents and gifts that we may have disconnected with through lifetimes. Chericlo has a, a very important message here to balance that soul, those soul memories from Atlantis that some of us may have. Sherry Clo is reminding us too that we need to listen. We need to put ourselves in a healing container to be able to receive our uh, innermost truth. And these three together is a container for holding that space to receive healing at this time. All right, let's go into the questions next. So here I have a couple of questions for you. Should you want to integrate this full moon energy some more? The first question is, how do you allow self-healing to happen? It's very often we uh, tap into friends and families and, of course, medical professionals for advice and guidance when we feel ill or we feel something is wrong. But here, this is a... Uh, question to complement that guidance. How can you create space within to ask yourself for advice? The second question is now with a renewed focus on Hydra Alfard, which uh, was about eight to 10 months ago, what have you learned about you and your life force and creativity and passion since then, because this is a second go around, around guidance to tap into that Kundalini energy. The, the third question is, so many of us have soul memories from Atlantis. So the question is, how can you hold space for yourself to heal coming back to your heart and multidimensional connection? In summary, here we have a significant fiery full moon with Ladies' wisdom transmission in focus, uh, surrounded by a hot seat of alignments, Venus, Jupiter, Sedna, and the sun, really highlighting this moment where we turn the page from an old chapter to a new chapter. The second theme, elevate your inner passion, uh, highlighting Hydra, Alfard, and Regulus here, supporting this long-term shift activated now by the full moon. And the third theme, holding space for Atlantis healing. This is also a um, balancing act between Chericlo and Atlantis asteroids, uh, but also with Mars and Saturn guiding that lesson and Mars helping us now to kick in gear <laughs> with this healing surfacing, using the element of water to calm down the, the fire, so to say, but also to help us let go. We're guided to honor our uniqueness, honor the connection that we have with the cosmos and the, the earth to be the bridge between the two, to allow that expansion happening for the collective at large. Stay curious, stay open, and stay receptive. Have a wonderful full moon. Thank you for listening to New Light Living Podcast. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my Galactic Alignments Reference Guide. There is a link in the description box below. Thank you very much for being here. I'll be back soon with another one. Bye.